So week five talked about archives, um, I guess in our 21st century and not just even in our 21st century, back then we were always in the presence of archives anywhere and everywhere. You know, it's inevitable, it's inescapable from books, computers, websites, letters, emails. The constant sources of information we are bombarded with is sometimes too much to comprehend. So what is an archive and what does it mean to archive? Simply put, it's the way we store information, you know, from writing letters, um, notes in the lectures, um, blogging, to even how our photos and music are stored, like iTunes library, the way that, you know, you comprehend, the way that you personally um, have a taste for a specific type of music and you store that, that's all archiving. We are archiving essentially every single day. Jack Derrida, a French philosopher, exemplifies archive and archive fever by exploring how we now hold an intrinsic desire to archive everything and keep everything archived. So this was coined as the archive fever. Basically, archive fever is to, you know, constantly make more archives, store new ones, get rid of old ones, change old ones, you know, and I guess this is where also authentic issues arise, you know, we destroy old archives, we try to push for new ones, and where does it really draw the line in between where authority stands and, um, yeah, ownership stands. Um, so Dorita coined archive fever to be a, to have a compulsive, repetitive and nostalgic desire for the archive. An irrepressible desire to return to the origin, a homesickness, a nostalgia for the return to the archaic place of absolute commencement. Um, so I guess even culture changes. Um, these also push for new archives. Um, new archives are invented, all are destroyed. For example, um, we can look back at... The printing press, um, when we used to have printing presses, we used a lot of newspapers. These were our archives. We stored information this way. A lot of us probably still have a lot of newspapers um, sitting at home. But now for me, someone that that's, you know, a younger generation compared to the old, in the 21st century, I use my laptop, I use my um, Samsung Galaxy Tab to um, just simply look at news online. Um, this is, I guess, a example of cultural changes of from the old archives to the new and you know to further heighten matters new media platforms are increasing our weight and perceptions of archives like the one i just mentioned before for example kindles um a lot of people are now into kindles um e-readers they don't like to carry a simple book around but they rather carry a small electronic device which allows them to just conveniently read things Social media is also another example. We can now store pictures, comments, news, just about everything. So are news networks online. And, you know, we read, we store. And I believe archive fever contributes to the fact that almost 90% of the people don't want paywalls to happen because it disturbs their natural desire for information online. Um, it, it allows them, it just pushes them to pay to do something, you know, and this doesn't naturally store things. Um, you have to pay for it, so why not go back to the old ways of newspaper? Because either way, you have to buy newspapers online and offline, if it were the case for paywalls. So in one of the readings, Matthew Ugle further discusses this in his um, discussion of the rise of new media world and its relations to archives. He acknowledges social media has opened a new door for us, quoting, Without deliberate planning, we have created amazing new tools for remembering. The real-time web might just be the most elaborate and widely adopted architecture for self-archival ever created. And I completely agree with this. I believe that new world media has really um, stepped up our game in archiving, you know, to back in the historic days where archiving was just, you know, really limited, really compressed in the way that we could archive and store information. This was probably mainly done by just simply writing. But now the um, new media world has en enabled us to store things, you know, not just into, like, just innerly, but like, you know, online, you know, we have these new platforms that have compressed and converged together that we can really store information in ways that we never have done before. You know, and I think this kind of led me to contemplating about our personal archives. Our personal archives basically consist of our memories, hobbies, cultures, religion, name it all. And does this really align with the data and information of the external world? If so, how? Um, we have this constant thriving desire and we're so unconscious because our mentality has been embedded in such an archive fever crazy type of world. Half the things we do, we don't even realise we're involving ourselves in archives. And does this personally affect our personal and inner and intrinsic archives? Um, does this deserve our identity in a way? Are archives actually doing damage to us? The lecture also discussed archives and two type of powers power over people events and power to that is like the capability 
it was insightful to grasp the reality of power within archives and how it quote power to affect and be power and be affected by all involved so yeah i guess it's really about maintaining the power between the two of archives and um the capability of it, the potential capabilities of how it can control us. Um, it really enlightened my viewpoint and, you know, to be honest, like, it's not really us that are controlling the archives, but somehow it seems that we're being man manipulated by archives, hence the whole archive frenzy, you know. Archives, therefore, can be seen as a notion which really drives our desire to a greater extent. We become greedy for more and more information. Just one isn't enough, you know. Dorita knows this. You know, we feel like we're in control. This exemplifies our desire for archives, but the reality is, are archives really in control or are we in control? Who's controlling? Who's manipulating more? I guess there is kind of, like, like a real tension in between that. Um, they're also utterly boring, some of them, as mentioned in the lecture again, but this doesn't stop our desire, which in turn regards the archives as a paradoxical concept. Archives also challenge other archives, as I mentioned earlier on, like um, cultural differences, cultural changes between newspapers, blogging, Kindles and just books. So yeah, um, I guess in the end, archives are a paradoxical concept, which in a, when which in essence, which uh, sorry, which is essential in our daily lives. We hate, we love. It's boring, it's fun. It gives us a self, self it's, it gives us a sense of control, identity, whilst dimin diminishing other archives and other authorities, and also our control over them. So I guess ultimately we are surrounded by archives more than ever now, with increasing new platforms. And I guess maybe even twenty years from now, we're going to even see greater changes to our archives, the way that we use, the, the way that we handle, and the way that we control.